Hey guys, so today we have another concept car video and we're going to take a look at the 2006 Hornet, a mini multi-purpose vehicle from Dodge. If you're not familiar with my other concept car videos, make sure to check those out in the top right corner as I've done many on the various Mopar vehicles. You can find the video outline on screen where today we are going in depth on the background info, exterior and interior, performance, future plans, and looking at why the Dodge Hornet was cancelled. And we'll also touch on the Hornet Revival for 2023. So let's get started. The Dodge Hornet was a front-wheel drive, five-door hatchback concept car from Dodge, unveiled at the 2006 Geneva Motor Show. During this time, Dodge was looking to expand and enter the European market and gain momentum in the compact car segment that was also growing in the United States. Daimler Chrysler also wanted to increase their market share in Europe from 0.9% to 1.6% in the next three years by 2009. To enter Europe and truly compete there, they needed a B-segment model with good fuel economy and the ability to maneuver tight European roads. The B-segment is the second smallest of the European segments for passenger cars between A and C, and these small cars account for 20% of total European car sales in 2020, so they've always been a very popular form of vehicle there. Think vehicles like the Toyota Yaris and Chevrolet Avio. There were also requests from US dealers who wanted a true entry-level Dodge vehicle that was below the Dodge Caliber, which retailed for $13,850 US for the base model in 2007. So the idea was born and Dodge started the 2006 European car show circuit with the Hornet. The name comes from the AMC Hornet, which was another compact car produced by American Motors Corporation from 1970 to 1977. And of course, Chrysler had the rights to the Hornet nameplate from their acquisition of AMC in 1987. The 2000 saw Chrysler pump out a ton of unique and extraordinary concepts, and the Hornet was another daring and experimental design. Just a year prior, there had been the Zen-inspired 2005 Chrysler Aquino, and the Hornet was another compact car that had just about nothing in common with any other Dodge vehicle. Without any previous experience in creating B-segment cars, Dodge had the freedom to go all out with their design. The Hornet has an upright square stance, kind of like a mix between a Mini and the Scion XB, in an attempt to appeal to younger audiences, but it's still recognizable as a Dodge vehicle upon first glance. The aggressive look starts with a signature Dodge crossbar grille front and center, similar to the Dodge Nitro and Caliber. Principal exterior designer on this project, Mark Mushigan, used the Super 16 rally cars for inspiration. He spoke about the team's goals for the project, saying, quote, we wanted a distinct edge to the design. We especially wanted to push the envelope of interior volume. That's why the Hornet is almost as wide as a C-segment vehicle, end quote. And the Hornet's oversized fender flares do help give it some extra chunk, and the side view is dominated by some big aluminum wheels, 19 by 6.5 inch with P18550 R19 tires. Those fill out the wheel wells nicely and give the car a nice wide stance. Beneath the wheels you can find gold painted brake calipers. Dodge also added some other features that might appeal to younger folks in the sport tuner world, like a visible intercooler, small offset hood scoop, front brake air ducts, and LED fog lights. The Hornet body is finished in liquid silver paint, with contrasting glass that has been tinted in a deep blue view color, apparently inspired by the look of fashion sunglasses. Mushigan envisioned that this would be a part of the customer selection, where you choose the body color and contrasting glass. Inspired by the Dodge Viper, the team then added dual beryllium gray stripes that run the entire length of the car, bumper to bumper. Other features include a rear wing on the tailgate and dual 3-inch exhaust tips. The final design elements were the triple orange slice turn signals, mirrors with auxiliary rally lamps, and matte metallic gray bezels. Moving inside, there was a crisp black and slate gray interior, sporty with extreme flexibility, turning the compact space into a fun and practical place to be. First off, you get inside thanks to the suicide rear doors which open backwards. These were popular on concepts in the mid-2000s, but never really made it to production vehicles. The instrument panel was designed to accommodate both left and right hand drive, with a satin silver center stack and fixed navigation screen with non-glare glass. It also moves with the steering wheel column. Circular elements are meant to mimic the exterior look. There are twin wrap-over pads that are added with shallow open storage trays underneath on both sides. The steering wheel has three tuning fork spokes that match the exterior wheels, which is a really cool feature. The foam seats are slim with built-in seat belts designed for high efficiency. They are cushioned with black urethane coated fabric with a fine woven textured cloth. 
the satin silver aluminum frame is exposed. The 4060 rear seats and passenger seat both fold forward to collapse into the floor, providing a flatbed if needed. The rear seats are also on a track, so they can move back around 8.9 inches for extra legroom. And the entire cabin floor is covered with durable honeycomb texture rubber. The unique features don't stop there. The driver's door trim panel contains a first aid kit, a storage bin, and Dodge branded closed case with a carrying handle that can be removed from the car. The passenger door has open and closed bins with bungee cords to keep items secure. And the rear doors serve other purposes too. The driver's side has a beverage cooler, and the passenger side comes with a built-in fold-out table. Additionally, all the bins are removable and can be rearranged to your liking. The cabin also gets 10 speakers throughout, two on each front door and three on each quarter panel, and there are grab bars and coat hangers for rear passengers. The Hornet looked like it could go really fast, and the performance wasn't half bad either. It was powered by a 1.6 liter supercharged 4-cylinder, 16-valve single overhead cam Tri-Tech engine. The engine used an Eaton M45 root supercharger. The output was rated for 170 horsepower and 165 pound-feet of torque, both at 4,000 RPM. Those were fantastic numbers for this class of vehicles. The Tri-Tech engine was a joint venture between Chrysler and BMW, produced between 1999 to 2007, and this version was said to have been manufactured in Brazil. It's also the same engine found under the hood of the Mini Cooper S. Dodge paired a 6-speed manual transmission with a Tri-Tech, again aiming to appeal to those that wanted a fun driver's car. Daimler Chrysler claimed the Hornet could launch from 0 to 60 miles per hour in around 6.7 seconds and hit a top speed of 130 miles per hour. Again, extremely impressive considering the car was pretty hefty, weighing in at 3,100 pounds. That makes it on par with the Mini Cooper S, faster than a Neon, and even faster than some of the base model V6 LX vehicles of the time, like the Chrysler 300 and Dodge Charger. Now let's look at the future plans for the Hornet after it was introduced. Again, as we discussed earlier, the objective here was to launch the Dodge nameplate in Europe and target young urban consumers there. Due to the different market, Dodge figured they had the best chance to do that with this mini-sized B-segment car. It was clear that Dodge had been targeting this market for some time, and they had already released previous compact performance concepts like the 2002 Dodge Razor and 2004 Dodge Slingshot. But unlike those, the Hornet originally had realistic expectations to become a production vehicle in several markets like the US and Europe by 2010. At the time of release in 2006, the Hornet was feasible for several reasons. First, the subcompact B segment was rapidly growing in North America, so why would Dodge just ignore it? The mid-2000s saw an influx of these vehicles, like the Scion XB and XD, Honda Fit, Pontiac Vibe, Toyota Yaris, and the Mini Cooper. If we take a look at 2008 sales numbers and rankings by model, while these hatchbacks aren't top 20 leaders in sales figures, there were still lots of demand with hundreds of thousands of people choosing these vehicles overall. Another factor for success is that Chrysler was looking for a partner to ease their transition into the small car market, and there were several possibilities. First, rumors started that the Hornet would share the chassis of the new Mercedes A-Class, after all, the two brands were merged at the time under the Daimler Chrysler umbrella. Increased cooperation between Daimler Chrysler and Volkswagen AG created speculation that the Hornet could use the VW Polo chassis from Europe in order to go to production. By 2008, there was news that the Hornet was planned to share the Nissan Versa platform, and there was even a backup plan to have Chinese brand Cherry Automobile, who had the experience and skills to assemble a small car that would be sold under the Dodge brand. So now let's look at a couple reasons why the Hornet was cancelled. Dodge wanted to release a compact car like this by 2010, but the plans changed thanks to a few unforeseen circumstances. First, the 2008-2010 to automotive industry crisis hit as part of the global recession. There are many issues at play regarding the recession, and there could be an entire video talking just about that, but here are some of the relevant points. First, the gas prices rose to about $4 per gallon in the US in 2008, so many Americans stopped buying bigger vehicles like SUVs and pickups. Those were far more profitable for Chrysler or any auto manufacturer, with a 15-20% to profit margin on an SUV, compared to just 3-5% on a car. So with less big vehicle sales, the profitability plummeted. 
It was also harder to buy a car for consumers, as it was more difficult to get a bank loan, and many people just didn't want to take on a new loan and payments during these uncertain financial times. All of that led to total sales dropping to around 10.4 million vehicles sold in the U.S. in 2009, which was the lowest total since 1982, and a huge 35% decrease from just two years prior in 2007, where the U.S. saw 16 million vehicles sold. And stock prices were also falling as shareholders became concerned. Most of these factors led to Chrysler filing for their Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection on April 30th of 2009, with a restructuring plan and sale of their assets. The new company had Fiat owning 20%, the United Auto Workers Union at 55%, and the U.S. and Canadian government as minority shareholders. At the end of the day, this caused Chrysler to cut costs, and the newly appointed Chrysler CEO, Sergio Marchion, had a five-year plan for the company. Chrysler was forced to cut expenses and prove long-term viability to the U.S. government, so the last thing that they were trying to do was introduce a new vehicle in a segment that they weren't familiar with like the Hornet in the B segment. Many vehicles were cut in the next several years, and Dodge had to stick with their bread and butter, with refresh models for the Avenger, Charger, Durango, and Grand Caravan for 2011. The Hornet wasn't in the cards, wrong place and wrong time, and the development was stopped entirely. Shifting back to recent focus, there has been lots of excitement about a possible return for the Hornet. Following the merger with Fiat in 2010, a new Hornet hatchback was expected to release between 2011 to 2013 using the code name PF. However, Dodge surprised everyone by releasing this vehicle as a small sedan in January of 2012, calling it the Dart instead. Now, more recently, there were expectations for a new Dodge vehicle. The Journey and Grand Caravan were phased out, and 2020 was the last model year for each of them, leaving only three vehicles in the Dodge lineup, the Challenger, Charger, and Durango. So that opens the door for a Dodge vehicle to fill in the gap that's left by the journey. The Hornet name has been circulating ever since FCA submitted two patent applications on March 3rd of 2020, one for Dodge Hornet and the other simply for Hornet. These patents were for the US, Canada, and Mexico. There are many renderings floating around the internet, but while they're fun to look at, they're just artist sketches, so don't read into them too much. Last week, the all-new 2023 Alfa Romeo Tonale was unveiled, and that's important for Dodge because the 2023 Dodge Hornet will be its platform mate. It will be a smaller two-row C SUV. It looks like the Hornet will be the first ever Dodge electric vehicle when it comes out in 2023, and it will be based on the Stellantis small wide 4x4 long wheelbase platform. As for the powertrain, there will be two for North America. The first is the turbocharged 2.0-liter global medium engine inline four-cylinder. In the Tonale, it's rated for 256 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque, paired to the ZF 9-speed automatic transmission. Horsepower could be bumped up, as we see in the Alfa Romeo Stelvio, which has 280 horsepower and 306 pound-feet of torque on 91-octane fuel from the same engine. The Tonale has Alfa's Q4 all-wheel drive system standard, so the Hornet might use something similar. The top model Tonale used a plug-in hybrid electric powertrain with a 1.3-liter turbocharged gas engine and a 6-speed automatic transmission that moves the front wheels, and a 15.5 kilowatt battery pack with an electric motor on the rear axle that delivers a total output of 275 horsepower. The Tonale with this powertrain runs 0 to 60 miles per hour in 6.2 seconds and has an all electric range of up to 50 miles in the city. So it sounds like this exact layout will be offered as the plug in hybrid electric powertrain option for the new 2023 Dodge Hornet. And unlike the original Hornet concept, Dodge now has no official presence in Europe and won't be selling this vehicle there. So in hindsight, the market ended up going the other way back to large vehicles as trucks and SUVs absolutely took over following the recession. Maybe the Hornet wouldn't have worked out well. Either way, we can look back to the Hornet as a blend of American aggressive styling and flexible interior and European concern for high gas prices and narrow roads. And we might just be seeing the return of the Hornet later this year. So that's in this video, guys. What did you think of the Dodge Hornet? Hope you enjoyed it and make sure to like and subscribe for more Mopar content and let me know if you want to see other concept car videos like this one. I'll see you guys in the next video.